In this video, we are asked to minimize the function subject to x squared minus y equals 1, which right away you can understand this is a parabola shifted by one unit down. So it looks like this at 0, when x is 0, y is minus 1. So in 3D, it looks like so. I used Wolfram Alpha to plot this. This is the curtain which has this kind of shape, right, floating in the air. And then we're restricting this curtain in 2D with a parabola. And we're asking, where is the minimum of this curtain in 3D on the path of the parabola? Probably somewhere over here, or over here, or over here, or over here. I don't know, so we have to check. And we also have to check um, the edges and all the critical points, and so on. So I plot it using Wolfram Alpha. It looks like this. And actually, it does give you all the answers, to be honest. But you have to know how to get these answers yourself, and to how to explain them. This is exactly the idea. And this is how the control map looks like. Let's do it by hand, and let's get those numbers that Wolfram Alpha already got in a couple of seconds. So you always start with plotting the 2D picture. Here it is, we did this, it's problem. Second, now we need to find partial derivatives with respect to x, with respect to y. With respect to x, if I'm looking at the original function, I will have 2x plus 2y and plus 2. With respect to y, we'll have 4y plus 2x plus 3. Please check if I did a mistake or not. Well, this uh, function is pretty straightforward, no chain rule, no product rule, very nice. Now, we want to find critical points, so, so we will set each equals to 0 and DNE and solving this system. I will divide this one by 2, then I will have 2x, no, I will have x plus y plus 1 equals to 0, and 4x plus 2y plus 3 equals to 0. And I could solve for one and then plug into the another one. For example, I will have from equation number 1, x equals minus 1 and minus y. Put it in the box, we will need it. Plug into the second equation, that's called substitution method. 4 times minus 1 minus y plus 2y plus 3 equals to 0, minus 4 minus 4y plus 2y plus 3 equals to 0, minus 4 and 3 gives you minus 1, minus 2y equals to 0, y will be 2y equals minus 1, y is minus 1 half, put this in the box, then go back to the box for the x value, x is minus 1 minus minus 1 half, which is 1 minus 1 plus 1 half, which gives you also minus 1 half. So the only critical point we found is minus 1 half comma minus 1 half. Very nice. This is the candidate for the global minimum. The other candidates are coming from the parable. Parable is our domain restriction. So let's write it down. Step three. Domain restriction is the parabola, which is x squared minus y equals to one. We could solve for y. That will be x squared minus one. And then plug, plug into the original. So f at x comma x squared minus 1 will be, plugging into the original will give you x squared plus 2 times y, which is x squared minus 1 squared, plus 2x times y, x squared minus 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared minus 1. 
Let, that's how I plugged my y. It was y squared, y, and y, like so. So we want to find the minimum of this function. And that is already a calculus one class. So minimize, minimize this. And this is in 2D. As you can see, there's only a function equals x. How did we do that? We find a derivative of this function. So we could first simplify. I would simplify first by expanding everything and do all the hard work. You will get 2x to the 4 plus 2x cubed minus 1. And of course, it's cheating that I'm avoiding all the algebra here. But this is not an algebra class, so pause and do all the work and compare with my answer. Let's call this function, what do you want to call it, capital F? Let's call it capital F, for no reason. Now, capital F prime will be, you see it's not a partial derivative anymore. So, we need to differentiate it and using calculus 1 or 2 material, depends on which class you learn it. We're going to find minimum of this function in 2d plus 6x squared so equal to 0 in d and e like we always do factor out 2x squared i will get 4x plus 3 equals to 0 and i'll get two nice solutions well actually three x equals plus and minus 0 don't forget it's squared but we don't need this since it's 0 but i'm just reminding and then 4x plus 3 equals to zero gives you the solution minus three quarters like so so we have more solutions from here now we are going to uh, check all the candidates so we have a candidate candidates what kind of candidates do we have let's go to the previous uh, critical point Minus one half and one half. So the point minus one half and one half. Remember, you list all the points. You make a list, plug it into the original function, and choose the smallest output. And then we have zero, and we need to find what's the corresponding y for that, and minus three quarters, and we need to find what's the corresponding y for that y is not y but the output f so i will plug this into f capital f so capital f that's the random name i just made up to be honest gives you minus one capital f at minus three quarters gives you minus seven six like so so it's going to be minus one and minus three quarters so we have three candidates for the minimum. And that is my x, s, and y. x, s, and y. So you did not actually have to call it f. I just realized you could call it y, which is fine. So we did y prime. And we call this y. We found the output for two dimensions. So... The thing is, we do have the extra solution here. This solution is not in the restricted domain, which is x squared minus y equals to 1. You can check that. Does it even make sense? Minus 1 half squared minus 1 half will be 1 quarter minus 1 half is not 1. So we have to cross out of the list, which is good because now we have less things to be bothered with. When we build the list, we plug everything into very, very original function f. What is the height of the three-dimensional function, a curve, at these points? And then choose the smallest one will give, give you global minimum, the biggest one will give you global maximum. If you plug into very, very, very original function, I will show you which one I mean. The one you got from the very beginning, this one. If you plug this number, so easy to plug 0 and minus 1. 0, minus, plus 2, 0, 0, 
minus 3. Plus 2 and minus 3 gives you minus 1. So the height of this output in 3D is minus 1. Minus 3 quarters minus 3 quarters took some time to calculate, but you can use the calculator. We have minus 155 over 1 to 8. So we don't know well which one is smaller. Well, obviously this one is greater than minus one. It's minus. Well, it's greater than. It's smaller than minus one. Minus 1.2109. So, enter. The answer is the global minimum. That's the global minimum. That's why we're checking local minimums uh, bit, uh, and then local minimums not on the edges and then at the edges. That's how we make, we find the global minimum. Happens at the point minus three quarters. Oh, I just realized there's a typo. When this should be minus seven six, I just realized that. So if you caught it earlier, good job. <laughs> this fix it minus seven six. I wrote it correctly over here. Surprisingly, I just did not plug it correctly into this um, line, third line. So minus seven over six. Let's me even write down like so. It's my x comma y comma, and it's put uh, purple z. And the output is minus 155 over 128. Always keep the exact answer because that's uh, more professional. That is my global minimum of the function on the restricted domain, which was a parabola in 2D. And it's always different depending on the restricted domain. If you have a rectangle or a circle, then you have to check also all different sides and different methods to use to check that. So check more videos then. Thank you for watching.